In this video, we're going to walk through how to track previous field values in Zoho CRM. This isn't something that Zoho CRM supports natively, but with a bit of creativity using workflows in Deluge, we can make it happen. First, we'll set up the custom fields that let us store and track the field's previous value. Then, I'll show you the Deluge function and the workflow setup that keeps everything in sync. We'll look at how to trigger workflows based on that previous value, or use it in custom views to supercharge your reporting. If you want to grab the reusable function code from this video, I posted it over at clubs and nada so you can copy and paste it right into your own crm before we dive in if you find this video helpful give a like and subscribe drop a comment below if you have any questions or feedback and if you'd rather somebody help you build this out or just want to chat about your zoho setup head over to zanata.com and click book a meeting we'd love to help all right let's jump in and get started this video does assume that you know a little bit about crm and how to make your own custom fields what we're going to do is for a test here we're going to do this inside of deals now inside the deals function, I have our main field, which I'm going to use stage, and I'm going to refer to it as the current stage from now on. And then we have our previous field. I'm going to refer to this as previous stage from now on. And then we have the helper field, and I'm going to refer to this as helper stage from now on. Now how this works is that when you run a workflow and you're grabbing the value from a function, you typically run this because the field has changed. And because it's already been changed, you can't access its previous value. So what we do here is when this field is changed, we're going to update the helper stage to have that value. And the value inside the helper stage is going to go into the previous stage. So this is how we get around uh, not being able to access that value is we're going to just store it before we need it. Now, we'll take a look at the code here and we'll take a look at this function I've put together and this is a standalone function now standalone functions can be ran throughout the CRM in multiple different areas I wrote this so that it's reusable throughout the CRM and basically what we do here is we need to call out the module we're going to use this in the ID of that module the API name of the current field and the previous field API name, and the helper field API name. And basically what's happening in here is when we call this, we just have to specify the deal. We'll get the deal ID from our arguments, and then we have our current stage, our previous stage, and helper stage. For anybody who doesn't know how to get to the API names, you go into your settings here, and then you go to modules, or you go to APIs and SDKs. You can go to API names here. We'll go to the deals section. So here's the API name for deals. It may be different on yours, so double check it. And then the search bar makes it very handy because we can just type in stage here, and now we can see those API names. Stage, previous stage, and helper stage. I purposely set up these API names this way. And so they're easy to read and move along through. Continuing on here, what we need to do is we need to always update that previous field with a workflow. So what we'll do is we will set up a workflow that when that stage is modified to any value, and we're gonna repeat this, and we have no conditions here, then we're going to run a function. Now in this function, we're passing in the deal ID. This could be different for whatever module you're using. So for instance, I will copy this and show you how you could run this another way. You could run this through contacts. And if your argument was a contact ID, you could run it through here. And maybe you have amount and helper amount. Now, this is another way to update a previous field in a different function. Now, once again, we are doing this in deals, so I'm going to leave this the way it is. So next, I'm going to show you kind of what the workflow looks like when it's running. So what we'll do here is we're going to come into our test lead here, and we are going to change from qualification to needs order. And we'll see here that our stage is needs order, and in the background, this is going to become qualification, and our helper stage becomes needs order. 
So once again, how this works is the stage becomes the helper stage, the helper stage becomes the previous stage. Now, when walking through how we could run workflows with this, we have to get a little bit tricky with this. And the reason is, is that the helper stage is actually going to be the previous stage during the workflow's execution. And this just kind of comes down to when this is being triggered and where everything is in that moment in time. However, that helper stage will be the previous value during the workflow. So what we have set here is we have this set at any time. And so what this says is the helper stage is qualification, is the condition to run this workflow. Then we are going to update the amount field to 100. So let's check this out. So we're going to come back over here, test study, and we're going to zero this out for a second. So going from needs order to qualification shouldn't trigger this, but it should capture my previous fields. So if we see here, everything gets captured. Now, what we need to do is we're going to run from qualification and we're going to go over to needs analysis. And we'll see now that our amount was edited to 100. Our needs analysis is our helper stage now, and the previous stage was qualification. Now, I built another one here. Previous stage, this is more specific. So a lot of times you're going to want to point towards something from another thing. So here we have the stage is modified to needs order and the helper stage is needs analysis. And what we're going to do here is update the amount to 500. So coming back to the lead here, basically what I'm saying is that if needs analysis is our stage and we go backwards to needs order, then we need to update this amount to 500. Now, while this may not be practical, this is just to show you that you can make these changes based off of criteria. What you're building in your CRM might be more specific to emails going out or other fields changing or more advanced functions happening. But for this tutorial here, I'm just gonna show you what happens when we go backwards now. So if I go from needs analysis to needs order, we'll take a look and our amount was updated to 500. We can see here that it's still tracking and we can move around however we want here and it's not going to update that amount unless it meets that criteria. So that checks off of the box of running workflows off of that previous stage. Now, just to recap, remember that we are going to point to the helper field or the helper, yeah, the helper field during workflow runs. And this just happens because of where the helper stage or the helper field is in that moment of time when this is executing. Now, when it comes down to custom views, for instance, if I go to deals here and we look at our views, I did make a custom view for previous field view. Now let's take a look real quick at our current standing for our test client right here. So currently he's in identify decision makers and his previous stage is needs order. So if I come into here and we make a custom view, you can see that I had this set up a different way previously, but what we'll do here is set up identify decision makers and the previous stage is needs order. Yep. Then when we save this, our test client should be in here. So this is how you can run custom views based off of the previous stage. So now this supercharges your reporting because now you might be able to have a report that says, hey, did somebody end up in one of these stages that was up here? Now you can track if things have gone backwards. You can also track this with amounts that have lowered or gone up. Once again, you can use these stage the previous fields and the helper fields, however you want throughout the CRM. It does not need to be a pick list or a stage, but I would recommend that you keep the type the same for the previous and the helper stages. And what I mean by that is if you're going to track the amount, which is a currency field, 
your previous amount and helper amount should be currency fields. Likewise, for anything that is a date, you should definitely use a previous date or a helper date for those as well. Now, while it's totally valid to use a single line for these things, your formatting will be consistent and overall reporting will be better if you use the same stage. Hopefully this helps you with creating advanced workflows or reports that you can now use previous values from a field. Leave me a comment down below if you found this video helpful or if you ran into the situation of needing the previous value in your CRM workflows. While you're there, make sure to like and subscribe on the video if you want to see more videos like this one. And for the first time, my name is Tim McGee and we'll see you again.